I'm Debbie Riley from CASE, the Center for Adoption Support and Education, and thanks for joining me at CASE Storytime. I'm really excited to share another book with you called Listening to My Body. It's by Gabby Garcia. And I chose this book because I think we have a lot of feelings about a lot of things, and sometimes we get confused about where those feelings are coming from and what they mean. So let's get started. Listening to my body. My body is my friend. It tells me lots of things. I yawn when I'm tired. My stomach growls to let me know I'm hungry. And sometimes I get goosebumps when I'm cold. This happens on its own without me doing anything. I may not even notice that it's happening but I can start paying attention to my body and so can you. So let's practice. What I want you to do is take your hands and trace the lines of your palms softly with your finger. When you finish, think about how it felt. So you take your hand and you're just gonna take your finger and roll it around the lines. How's that feel? That felt tickly to me. When I pay attention and listen to my body, I notice many different sensations. Sensations are the physical feelings we all have inside and outside our body. Cold, sweaty, strong, breathless when you run too much are examples of sensations. Have you felt these sensations before? Now, let's do something together. We're gonna rub our hands really quickly. Do this. What do you hear? What do you notice? Is there anything different? I felt my hands are really warm right now. Are yours? The sensations in my body are always changing. There are times when my body is wriggly and squirmy and I feel like I have ants in my pants. And other times, my body is calm and still. Sometimes the beat of my heart is like a gentle tap. Sometimes it feels like a pounding drum. Now, let's practice together. I want you to place your hand over your heart and feel it beat. Can you feel it? Now, I want everybody to jump up and down five times. Okay, ready, go. One, two, three, four, five. Now put your hand on your heart again. My heart's going like this. Wow, that's different, isn't it? I can also listen to my body for clues about how I'm feeling about things that are happening around me. Feelings are not good or bad. They're just something that we all experience. You can be curious about something. You can be grumpy because you didn't get your favorite chocolate chip cookies today. You can be scared. Maybe there was a loud noise that you heard or a few feelings we all have. What are other feelings that you can name? Maybe you could think about some of the feelings that you have today. What I've learned from listening to my body is that sensations are feelings that go together. I noticed this when I got to ride a roller coaster for the very first time. I was super excited that I was finally tall enough to ride, but I also felt really nervous as I climbed on board. My belly felt squishy and fluttery. My mom calls that having butterflies in your stomach but I thought it felt more like a kitty chasing ping pong balls in there. <laughs> That's silly. What sensations do you notice when you're excited or nervous? When I got off the roller coaster, I was buzzing and tingling all over. My eyes were like saucers and I had a smile plastered on my face. I felt awesome. Place your hand on your belly and I want you to take 10 deep breaths. 
Notice your belly as it moves in and out with each breath. How does your belly feel? Soft, relaxed, tight, or something else? So let's practice. Put your hand on your belly and let's breathe in 10 times deeply. your belly feel. Sometimes when I'm sad, I get a lump in my throat that makes it hard for me to talk or breathe. Soon warm tears roll down my face and I might start to cry and cry harder. Crying makes me feel so much better. So do hugs. We all feel sad at times. What do you need when you feel sad? What I want you to do now is practice. Wrap your arms around yourself and give yourself a big, gentle hug. Let's try this. That feels pretty good, doesn't it? Remember that, you can always give yourself a hug. My mom once explained to me that sensations and feelings are like the waves in the ocean. Some come crashing in while others roll in gently, and they always come and go. We can't stop the ocean and the waves from coming, but we can pay attention to them so they don't knock us over. Sometimes my skin gets burning hot and my jaw feels hard as rocks. That happened to my body the last time I really got angry at my sister. She just destroyed my puzzle I was working on all afternoon. I stomped my feet and I slammed the door, but I really wanted to kick it. But then I remembered to take a deep breath, just like we practiced, and blow through my lips like a horse. And it didn't take long for my jaw and hands to relax and for my skin to cool down. The angry feeling and sensations faded away. Blowing horse lips even made me feel a little silly and tickled. I decided to put the puzzle on a table that my sister couldn't reach. Let's practice. Close your mouth so your lips touch gently. Inhale through your nose and blow a strong puff out through your mouth so that your lips flap like a horse. Let's practice. Very good. Remember to do that when you're feeling angry. Sometimes I get overwhelmed and I need help from a grown up. On the first day of school, I woke up super early because I couldn't stop thinking about what my new class would be like. My stomach felt like it was tied in knots so I couldn't eat my breakfast. In class, it was hard for me to focus on what my new teacher, Mr. Morgan, was saying and my body was shaky. When it was time to line up, I accidentally bumped my desk and knocked my stuff all over the floor. Everything was going so wrong. Mr. Morgan helped me pick up my things and I took deep breaths like she reminded me to. I told her about my morning and she explained that our brains have a hard time thinking when our bodies are tired and hungry. Mrs. Morgan thought I would feel better if I had a snack and rested in a quiet place while the class was at recess. She was right. When I came back to the classroom, I was calm and I was able to focus on the rest of my day and it went much better. It's okay to get help when we need it. Who is an adult that helps you? So think about who at home right now is a good help. 
At other times when I'm upset, I can figure out what I need on my own by listening to my body. I can pay attention to my breathing, my heartbeat, the temperature of my skin, or to any other sensation. Am I hungry? Maybe I'm thirsty. Maybe I'm tired, or maybe I've got so much energy I wanna just run around. Is my belly tense and tight or soft and relaxed? These are just some questions I can ask myself. I can also try to name my feelings. Do I feel peaceful or playful? Confused or frustrated? Hurt or cranky? There are many different ways I may be feeling. And you know what? They're all okay. Listening to my body and naming what I feel takes practice, but it helps me figure out what I need. Do I need to have a snack, drink some water, or maybe I need to get some rest? Do I need to take deep breaths or sing my favorite song? Do I need to sit in a quiet place alone or go outside or jump upside, up and down inside my house? I can color, draw, dance, cuddle with my dog, or hang out with somebody in my family that I love. Things, these things I do can help me feel calm, happy, or peaceful. Everybody's different, so you can decide what feels best for you. The more I practice feeling and listening to my body, the better I get at responding with care and kindness for myself. I can get better at listening to my body and so can you. Well, I really enjoyed reading that to you and I hope you remember some of the things that we learned today about taking naps, eating when we're hungry, taking deep breaths when we might be angry, or maybe saying something kind to someone at home today. So thanks and I'll see you soon. Bye. Thank you.